service to humanity and you are welcome to another episode of the program which has been specially put together to update you on the activities of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. My name is Hafsat Mustafa Hadija, your anchor. On this episode of the program, we shall continue with a review of some major events in the ministry in the year 2021, especially as it concerns persons living with disability. What efforts has the ministry made to improve on the well-being and how is the Disability Commission thriving under the ministry? Our review will spill over to include some agencies on that ministry to see activities they were engaged in towards the end of last year. Join me after the break for details of our program. The Empire program is key to helping young Nigerians acquire and develop. The federal government of Nigeria remains committed to including and protecting persons with disabilities to guarantee that no one is left behind. I say that we are going through challenging times. And I say this woman running all about the country trying to help our people because this lady is doing a very good job for our country. Thank you. Thank you for all what you have been doing for us. Our program starts with the news highlights. In the lineup, the Honorable Minister receives an award from the International Human Rights Commission, even as the UN pledged support towards returning IDPs in Borno to a life of dignity. Please stay tuned. The Honorable Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has been awarded the most trusted woman in public office. The award was presented to her by the International Human Rights Commission. While presenting the award in Abuja on Thursday, the country ambassador of the commission, Dr. Friday Sani, said, The award was presented to the Honorable Minister after two years of investigation into the alleged financial irregularities and diversion of funds meant for the poor people of Nigeria by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. He added that the findings of the investigation nullified any allegation of financial impropriety against the minister and found her worthy for the award. Our regional organization, which has received several complaints over financial irreg irregularities, diversion of funds meant for the poor people of Nigeria by Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, prompted our close to two years investigation with our world-class security organization partner, partner, known as the International Police Corporation, which is one of the highest international police security network in the world, to investigate and track down these allegations. The report we have received from the partner, International Police Corporation, has proven negative of any money diversion linked directly or indirectly to the Honorable Minister. In her remark, the Honorable Minister of Humanitarian Affairs Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk said, Though the ministry is newly established by President Muhammad Buhari due to his passion for helping poor and vulnerable people, the ministry has empowered many Nigerians under various social investment programs. These are all government interventions geared towards uh, uh, alleviate poverty, uh, supporting the poor and vulnerable, victims of disasters, man-made or uh, uh, natural uh, disasters. And you can see the complexity and the scale of my mandate. And because we deal with the most um, you know, vulnerable people, it is a very uh, critical uh, situation that we are in. And it is not always very easy, you know, to to satisfy every uh, maybe or any person or vulnerable person in this country, but especially considering the limited resources at our disposal. Uh, but uh, we are doing our best. Uh, we see it as service to humanity. And uh, we see it as a real privilege and, and, and you know, an honor uh, that we are given this opportunity uh, to serve uh, our people. Also speaking at the event, 
the coordinator of National Social Investment Programs, NSIP, Engineer Umar Binder, thanks the International Human Rights Commission for recognizing the Honorable Minister for the award. There is no words that we can say to totally thank you. For first of all, recognizing that this Honorable Minister, in this ministry and nationally, we refer to her as Madam Humanitarian. Somebody who doesn't uh, leave any stone unturned to ensure that the poor and the vulnerable, for the first time in the history of this country, is well focused to ensure that their life changes. Speaking with journalists immediately after award presentation, the minister expressed her appreciation for the award, noting that this is just another challenge for her to do more. She also dedicated the award to the team of her staff in the ministry, who have been supporting her in achieving the success so far recorded in the ministry. As we always say, uh, history of austerity will judge us right. And uh, this will make us to do more in the discharge of our responsibilities. UN Under Secretary General Emergency Relief Coordinator Martin Griffiths has led a delegation on a visit to the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk in Abuja. I want to uh, assure you that the federal government... Talks during the visit centered around the successful return of internally displaced persons to their homes in Borno State. The minister, Sadia Umar Farouk, assured the UN that the federal government under President Muhammad Buhari is committed to returning the IDPs to their homes and in dignity. She said the president is doing everything possible to end the insurgency in the region. The government of President Muhammad Buhari is also committed in ensuring that these people are returned back to their respective communities in safety and in dignity. And uh, we have uh, government uh, agencies that are saddled with that responsibility, which my ministry is coordinating. Speaking earlier, Leader of the Delegation and UN Under Secretary General and Emergency Relief Coordinator Martin Griffiths said the UN remains committed to partner with Nigeria in her efforts towards settling IDPs in their homes. Referring to his visit to Borno State, Griffiths said the UN and Nigeria will go into a partnership in the medium and long term that will aid the successful return of IDPs to their homes in dignity, respect and prosperity. But I would la the last point I would make, and which I will make when I'm back in New York and Geneva, is just to be rem to be reminded of the appalling tragedy that befell those people those many years ago, and to hear their stories again, first time for me, obviously not for you, to hear the stories of what happened to those women, mostly and in particular and their families, and the destitution, and the cycles of displacement that resulted. The conscience of the world needs to remember and never forget what happened there, and to stand by your side as you and your fellow ministers uh, address the issues on behalf of the people. So it was a very, very productive visit, and it was very, very useful for me. Across the six geopolitical zones. She used this money for what it is meant for, literally to take care of their family. In 36 states and the FCT. Over 6.4 million of Nigerians poorest of the poor in about 1.3 million households receive conditional cash transfers of 5,000 Naira monthly under the Household Obligement Program of the federal government. Their joy knows no bound. And the government did work because they did work for us. It helped me to do any other thing my family. Reducing absolute poverty promoting shared prosperity through the Conditional Cash Transfer Initiative. The Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in service to humanity. Welcome back from that break. Our review of major happenings in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs 
Disaster Management and Social Development for the year 2021 focuses on the Department of Special Needs and its activities for persons with disabilities. One thing that was evident is that the Ministry is leaving no stone unturned to give the persons with disabilities inclusivity. Let's recap some of the events in this first segment of the program. Development, and 2021 for the Special Needs Department of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development started with a special training workshop in Benway State for identified local producers of assistive devices in the country. This was in April 2021. The three-day workshop was organized in collaboration with Factorial Engineering Limited with the sole objective of ensuring that millions of persons with disabilities enjoy the right to independent living, inclusion, participation through local production of quality and affordable assistive devices. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Haji Asadia Umar Farouk, was represented by the Director of Special Needs, Florence Nkechi Onwukwe. In her address, she revealed that an interagency technical working group had been constituted by the federal government to conclude work on a comprehensive roadmap to aid assistive technology production in Nigeria with specified mandates. The roadmap being developed is set as as follows. Improving that on usability and assistive technology to countries in Increase availability of quality assistive devices in public and private sector. Increase financial resources, mobilize assistive technology. I therefore want to encourage the participants here today to maximize the opportunities of today and utilize efficiently the little support that will be provided at the end of this training. I wish to assure you that government remains committed. We do have debt to cover for the needs of our people, including persons with disabilities. The workshop had training sessions focusing on principles of assistive technology, types of assistive technologies, principles and practice of entrepreneurship, amongst other topics. Facilitators and participants described the workshop as timely and necessary to grow their businesses. So thank you very much, uh, the presenter, once again. As a follow-up, the Ministry held a stakeholders meeting in June 2021 to validate the draft national roadmap on local production of standardized assistive technologies for persons with disabilities PWDs, in Nigeria. The Permanent Secretary, who represented the Minister during the session, harped on the inability of PWDs to afford assistive devices and explained what the federal government is doing to solve the problem. The federal government through the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs wished to change this narrative and therefore felt the need to come up with a working document that will guide the assistive technology implementation in Nigeria. It is on this basis that this stakeholders validation meeting is convened as a critical step to the development of a national roadmap on local production of assistive technologies for persons with disabilities. Speaking in an interview, the Director Special Needs, Mrs. Nkechi Onwukwe, spoke further on the roadmap and what it hopes to achieve. The roadmap is a, is a document, is a guideline which uh, you know, directs the country on uh, how to you know, produce, procure and distribute uh, assistive technologies in the country. Because uh, the guideline will bring standardization to the type of uh, assistive devices we are using in the country. Because without the roadmap, it will be difficult to really know the quality, the type, and uh, you know, the, the specification that we need. Towards the end of the year 2021, the Ministry, through the Department of Special Needs, 
also hosted state directors responsible for the rehabilitation of persons with disabilities to a meeting. The meeting was aimed, amongst other things, at ensuring a uniform approach to dealing with challenges faced by people with disabilities for prompt and effective responses to such challenges. The minister was represented by the permanent secretary, Bashir Nura al Ghali, reiterated the need for continuous deliberations to improve the lives of people with disabilities. It is therefore assumed that this forum will accord us all the opportunity to rub minds, deliberate and come up with concrete steps towards ensuring that the target group, which is the disability commission, uh, community, for which we serve, get our best. In the course of implementing the ministry's mandate, we realize that government cannot do it alone. Hence, the need for collaboration with other related ministries, departments, and agencies. Director Special Needs, on her part, urged the state directors to implement mechanisms that would enable them work in synergy with the current development efforts. I would like to employ you all to initiate actions towards the effective coordination and rehabilitation services in your various states, especially social welfare secretaries of your various LGAs, in order for them to be in tune with the current development efforts as providing efficient service delivery to the target group. program is still service to humanity. In the last segment, we review some major initiatives of the Ministry for Persons with Special Needs. Our review will spill over to include some agencies under the Ministry to see activities they were engaged in towards the end of last year. Before the year 2021 ended, the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities commissioned the National Disability Electronic Certificate Production Center located at the Office Complex of Persons with Disabilities in Abuja. The special guest of the event at the occasion was the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajia Saidia Umar Farouk. The minister, while there, also launched a mini braille printing center, as well as a national disability data processing center, an accessible office complex, and two operational vehicles to improve mobility and productivity of the commission. I am very delighted this afternoon to be here in your midst to witness uh, this very uh, drastic uh, development that uh, has taken place in the last one year in this commission. And I feel very, very, really uh, delighted. This is unprecedented. Within one year, we've been able to accomplish uh, so much. And by the day, this is growing. As I see this commission being nurtured, to the stages of growth to fulfilling its mandate. Speaking to journalists, the Executive Secretary of the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities, Mr. James David Lalu, lauded the efforts of President Muhammad Buhari in providing a befitting office for persons with disabilities. President Muhammad Buhari have done the best he can be able to do to the disability community and his name shall remain engraved in the heart of the disability community forever. The Commission also organized the 2021 International Day for Persons with Disabilities with the first edition of a Disability Summit, bringing together the best of the best among persons with disabilities in Nigeria to show that there is ability in disability. Persons with disabilities were joyous about having a sense of belonging and are hopeful of better days to come. I want to give credit to the current pre uh, administration, the, the administration of Allah, Muhammad Buhari. It has been wonderful. The, 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 the community of persons with disabilities have not seen this kind of uh, attention that we are getting today from, from creating the National Commission for Persons with Disability. Person with disability, the born and unborn, will come to meet this history and posterity. 
The Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals is yet another office under the purview of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. In 2021, the office constructed a 120-bed capacity mother and child hospital located in Gashua, Yobe North Senatorial District of Yobe State. The hospital, which was named after President Muhammad Buhari, was commissioned by the President of the Senate, Senator Ahmad Lawal, who facilitated the project. Speaking, the Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, Adejoke Orologbe Adefulire, thanked all that were present to witness the commissioning of the hospital. She disclosed that the project is one of the projects SDGs has completed and equipped across Nigeria. Adefulire thanked the President of the Senate for facilitating the project. According to her, the newly commissioned hospital has adequate facilities such as private ward, intensive care unit for babies and mothers, a standby ambulance, among others, too numerous to mention. Uh, the facility will take care of the prenatal, antenatal, postnatal, gynecology, and of course, it also takes care of uh, delivery, uh, post delivery complication, pre delivery complication, and post delivery com complication that might arise. And if the children also have any issue complication this uh, we attend to it we have physiotherapy machine we have incubator for the most tiny baby here to survive it will help government in reducing maternal mortality and infant mortality in this community in this state and this senatorial district in his remarks senator ahmad lowell disclosed that the hospital has been named after president muhammad buhari in view of his support and cooperation to the people of the area in the provision of democracy dividends he thanks president buhari for such a wonderful project. Having gone through the various uh, uh, facilities in this Muhammad Buhari Mother and Child Hospital, I'm fully satisfied with what I've seen. And I want to thank uh, Mr. President for approving the construction of this edifice, a health facility that will help in eliminating uh, maternal and child mortality in this part of Nigeria. A skills acquisition center constructed by OSSAP SDGs and donated to Umar Suleiman College of Education, Gashua was also commissioned by the Senate President. The college authorities decided to name the Entrepreneurship Center Ahmad Lawal Center for Entrepreneurship after the Senate President. For the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, it celebrated the World Day Against Human Trafficking with a sensitization walk and a summit to draw attention to the plight of trafficked persons with a view to rallying support towards stopping the menace. In September 2021, the agency got a new DG in the person of Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi. The agency organized several events thereafter towards achieving its mandate. On the 21st of December 2021, the agency closed the year with a successful reuniting of a six-year-old trafficked victim, Hawa Ibrahim, with her father. The victim was abducted over three years ago in Gombe State, but found in Anambra State. Malam Ibrahim said his daughter was abducted on 9th December 2018 by one suspect, Hawa Abbakar, an indigent of Gombe, a social worker, working with Yamalti Deba local government area of Gombe State. While reuniting the victim with her family, the Director General Naptip noted that tracking the menace of human trafficking in Nigeria needs cooperation from various stakeholders, including security agencies, governments at different level, community leaders and members of communities. She noted that about 75% of the stolen people are trafficked between the state's line and only 2% are trafficked outside the country. Right now in Nigeria, there is this trend of children being stolen from the north and sold to, to the south coast. 75% of people trafficked in Nigeria are trafficked across state lines. 23% are trafficked within the state. Just 2% are trafficked internationally. So why we, we focus on the international dimension of trafficking in person, we also have to focus on what is happening to us, you know, right here at home.
It is on that note we draw the curtains on this episode of Service to Humanity. Let me use this forum to congratulate the Minister on her award by the International Human Rights Commission. We say more power to your elbows and greater achievements. Until I come your way again next week, enjoy the rest of your day.